This is your Barbados Today News Update. So glad you could join us. Prime Minister Mia Motley is predicting that economic activity and jobs will pick up as long-delayed projects get off the ground soon. She made the comments while addressing the Global Town Hall meeting for Barbadians living in the diaspora last evening. And we are now at a stage where we believe that a number of the key projects that we are looking at are likely to start. We've seen clearing of ground. Of course, COVID really, really hit us hard and put a pause on a number of projects that we expected to start from since last year. The bottom line is that um, based on what I'm seeing coming across town planning, based on what I'm seeing in terms of people clearing grounds, I expect that we are in a position to see heightened economic activity and by extension, jobs that will make a major difference to, to, to the lives of Barbadians who have been um, suffering from COVID in the course of the last the last 21, 22 months. She, however, remains concerned about the high cost of living, which she said is largely out of the hands of government and the local business community. She, however, assured that government will continue to talk with the private sector to find solutions. We're meeting back on the 1st of December again, but we understand that this is going to not be an easy thing to wrestle, wrong, wrestle to the ground. And we have said, as he has correctly pointed out, there is a difference between imported inflation and those things that are within our cost domestic, within our capacity domestically to control. We're trying to do that in a way that makes sense. We're looking at a number of options, but let us appreciate, as he said, the world is in a very, very, very uncertain place. And, and we have been talking to the country about it because as I said yesterday, nobody owes us a living. And unless we get on top of this and get on top of these issues with, with speed, we're going to find that we will become victims beyond our capacity to recover. Barbados's transition to become a republic was also a major talking point at the event. She maintained it was the right move for the country and pledged there will be widespread consultation on the new constitution. And we have already given the assurance from the very beginning, might I add, that we will do that, not just as a constitutional document with 150 or 200 pages and you have two months to read it and decide, but chapter by chapter by chapter, so that you begin to have every month a different focus on the kinds of activities, whether it is the fundamental rights and freedoms, whether it is the structure of cabinet and the executive authority, whether it is the public service, whether it is parliament, whether it is the boundaries commission, whether it is the new integrity commission that we hope to put in the constitution. These are the things that will fundamentally be the subject of deep engagement with the Barbadian public and diaspora. The family of Shamar Boyce is finding it hard to come to terms with his loss. 23-year-old Boyce, who was riding his motorcycle on the ABC highway last evening, died after being involved in a collision with a car. Shamar's father, Christopher Boyce, and Shamar's girlfriend, Michaela Lynch, said the young man was full of life and he would be dearly missed. He's doing a lot, he's making a lot of fun. Sporty, making me laugh. I love him. He was loving. He was a joyful boy. He he was very supportive. He used to help his father a lot. He to me, I feel real bad right now that that he gone. What were some of the good things that you remember about him? That he was late for the party. He always know how to make you laugh, even in a situation where you feel down, he will always cheer you up. You know he was known for? For a small mind, boy, fear. Barbados needs to embrace persons struggling with their sexuality. That's the view of Senator Reverend John Rogers as he questions strong criticism about the use of the term sexual orientation in the Charter of Barbados. Rogers told the upper chamber on Wednesday, it's time for change. It is time for us to seriously have a discussion about what we're doing to our children, our families, and by extension, our community. When parents feel it necessary to estrange themselves from their children just to hold their place in society, just to keep their face up, as we say, where children have to leave the only place that they've been nurtured in and feel estranged in the only society they know. It's 
Mr. President, it is only a small percentage. But that's precisely why we have anti-discrimination legislation, because it's always to protect the minority. Senator Reverend Dr. John Rogers, a member of the subcommittee that formulated the charter, also sought to clarify the purpose of the charter. That at no point in time, this document was ever purported to replace the preamble or the constitution of this country. In fact, from the outside, outset, it was an intended not to have any legal power, but just to set out, as I said, the hopes and aspirations of our people, balanced with the right and responsibilities, nothing enforceable. It was most shocking to hear some of the rhetoric about removing God from a document that didn't exist. This parliament, both chambers, voted to amend the Constitution of Barbados for the change of the head of state from a monarch to a president and adopted the Constitution of Barbados with all else intact, including its preamble, which acknowledges the supremacy of God. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Christian Paul. I'm the country manager of BCIC here in Barbados. When the COVID vaccine first came out, I thought it was an interesting and a potentially successful way for us to navigate our way out of the pandemic and a return to some state of normalcy. I took the vaccine because I have a young family. I want to make sure that they are safe and protected. I have friends, extended family, and obviously I work here with colleagues, so I thought it was a good way to protect, to help protect them and to keep them safe, as well as myself. I would encourage others to take the vaccine because I know that you can still transmit the disease, even if you're vaccinated, but the chances of being severely ill or worse dying are significantly reduced. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news now, the Bahamas government is gearing up to present a supplementary budget next week. We get the details of government's priorities in this report from Eyewitness News. Minister of Economic Affairs Michael Halkid is sharing a snapshot of substantial changes to be expected. First up, the extension of government's social safety net for those experiencing economic hardship. Take into account the extension of the National Insurance Special Unemployment Program. Um, it was due to expire in September. It's been extended to December. Uh, provisions will be made for the increase in public service pensions and as well for the lump sum payment to those who are on the um, National Insurance uh, unemployment, unemployment Program. Changes to the capital budget also on the way to reflect government's reality of what it will actually take to roll out its various projects. You'll see a reduction in that budget. Um, doesn't mean that projects are being cancelled. It just means that we're reflecting what will be spent in this, in this budget cycle and you'll see an increase in the recurrent expenditure. And apparently good news on the way in regards to the national deficit. We're forecasting a reduction in the deficit from, I think, what was just about $950 million in the budget that was presented in June to about $850 million um, in, our, in our revision, so a slight reduction in the deficit. On the international scene in the U.S., there's been big reaction to three white men being convicted of murder on Wednesday for chasing and shooting Ahmad Arbery as the black man ran through their neighborhood. Ahmed Arbery's uh, father let out um, an exclamation uh, in the court. Um, his mother looked very somber and was uh, weeping. The, the three men uh, remained um, expressionless and um, they will now um, await sentencing at a later date uh, Georgia does carry the death penalty uh, for murder, but uh, the prosecution was not seeking that uh, in this case. Um, there were also um, shouts um, and celebrations um, outside the court uh, with many uh, activists, uh, black and white, uh, there uh, hoping um, that what they saw as justice uh, would be done. And uh, they were later addressed by um, some lawyers and, and activists who had been following this case uh, the Reverend uh, Al Sharpton, a, a veteran of the civil rights uh, movement, uh, said that uh, this jury, which uh, controversially was uh, 11 uh, white people and one uh, black person, even in a, 
in an area that uh, is more than half uh, black in its population. Uh, but Sharpton said uh, those 12 jurors uh, had uh, proven today that black lives uh, do matter um, and that this was a historic day that uh, would be uh, well remembered. Um, the verdict also praised by Arbery's uh, family, who said uh, they had conquered uh, what was a modern day uh, lynching by a, a, a lynch mob. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.